My name is Zuko Sukumar, and today I'm going to be speaking on the global health issue of the health poverty trap and how poverty cycles perpetuate reduced healthcare utilization. A little bit about me is I'm a rising sophomore at Independence High School, and some of my extracurriculars include being a volunteer at the Legacy Willow Bend Retirement Community, I'm a CTA volunteer, and a volunteer at the SciTech Discovery Center. I play varsity basketball, and I'm a co-founder of the nonprofit Udavi, and I've practiced classical dance for 10 plus years. I'm very interested in neuroscience, and I hope to pursue a career as a neurosurgeon one day. So to begin, this is an overview on poverty cycles and their relationship to healthcare utilization and their overall relationship with global health. So poverty cycles are self-reinforcing mechanisms that cause poverty to persist, and it's very difficult for individuals and communities to break free of these cycles, as they are quite literally born into them. Referring to the graphic of the poverty cycle, you can see that it begins with low-income families, and children from these families suffer with poor educational outcomes as a result of a lack of resources, and it's very difficult for to get a job after this. And this thus correlates to an average poor overall life outcome. And these poverty cycles continue to be sustained as it goes back to low income families and so on. Poverty cycles continue to be perpetuated as poverty rates only continue to be increased drastically. Since 2020, they have increased by more than half a million people. And in 2023, there were roughly 648 million people that were living in extreme poverty. Many have inherited poverty from their own parents and will live to pass on to their own children. And this itself is why poverty cycles are a very pressing global health issue. And more on that, poverty cycles are very tightly related to global health with many factors. For instance, on average, low health literacy is facilitated by lower economic levels. And on average, greater average healthcare spending correlates with higher life expectancy. And additionally, similarly, on average, lower average healthcare spending correlates with lower life expectancy. And to tie it all to healthcare utilization, healthcare utilization only serves to further sustain poverty cycles due to the high expenses that come with the healthcare utilization. And now to move on to the health poverty trap. The health poverty trap is very similar to poverty cycles and to the global health form of poverty cycles. It's when those with low income experience poorer health and that lowers their ability to earn higher incomes and that thus cycles back to poor health. As we can see in the graphic, the health poverty trap is separated in two parts, growth and development. The growth section of the health poverty trap begins with low income that correlates then to low saving, low investment, and then low economic growth. The growth section maintains a low economic status. And on the development side, low income goes to low levels of education and healthcare, then low levels of human capital, and thus low productivity. There are many factors that factor on to sustain the health poverty trap and these include low health literacy. Health literacy is the ability of an individual to understand, obtain, and process basic health information to make a good health decision. And on average, populations with a low average health literacy are less likely to seek health care and are more likely to manage their health poorly. And as supported by the graphic, countries that are more developed or have a higher average socioeconomic level are more likely to have a higher health literacy rate. Another factor that greatly impacts the sustaining of the health poverty trap is the use of traditional medicine, specifically the use of traditional medicine as primary health care. Globally, traditional medicine is very popularly used. Specific ethnomedical beliefs that are very popular include Ayurvedic medicine in India, traditional Chinese medicine, and traditional African medicine. 80% of the world, or roughly 4 billion people, use ethnomedical beliefs as primary health care. And this is mainly in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, or less developed countries or countries with an average lower economic level. 
And these ethnomedical beliefs are greatly promoted by the government in these less developed countries, which help support it as the primary health care. Additionally, another factor that supports these health poverty traps is resource availability. And in this case, the availability of healthcare services. As supported by the table and the information in the table, on average, higher economic groups have greater available health care and greater available health care correlates with greater um, health care utilization. There are many efforts that can be used to combat the health poverty trap, such as raising charitable funds and donations, and they are very essential as these efforts help improve the quality of life and health for those in poverty. For instance, Udavi, the nonprofit that I co-founded, is dedicated to this cause. At Udavi, they are dedicated to sponsoring people's health care. And supporting nonprofits like Udavi helps break the cycle of poverty and ensures a healthier future for vulnerable communities and helps combat the health poverty trap. As we conclude the presentation, Martin Luther King once said, of all the forms of inequality and injustice in health is one of the most shocking and inhumane. As a society, we need to continue to work towards a healthier future for all and a lack of inequality in healthcare, especially relating to any economic differences. These are my citations. And I would like to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference for the opportunity to present my research and spread awareness about the health poverty trap. And I would also like to thank the Utabi team for enabling me to help improve the quality of life of those in need. Thank you, and feel free to reach out to me with any questions.